So this is a very soft lightning talk. Um, it's not very uh, code talk. So I'm going to talk about stuttering or stammering or why timing is not my strong suit. So yeah, um, I was born stammering because my father does so. And there's usually a lot of misconceptions that people have around it that they don't know about. So I usually give this talk when I start with a new job or school or meet someone new. So they sort of I don't understand what I'm doing, how I'm feeling. And stuff like that, and I thought that that might be interesting. So, don't know what is stammering. Stammering usually is um, categorized in, into four categories, which is uh, sound, the repetition, pausing before speaking, prolonging words, or text. So, a repetition means that if you use a long, you use l l l l long, and pausing before speaking, you sort of yeah the person. And then freezes, it can't really figure out what, what they're trying to say, and then just words come out. Uh, prolonging words usually go into um, when you say long, and you say long with multiple O's in, 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 instead. Or ticks when people make weird faces to, to try, trying to force something out. That might include <coughs> ra raising eyebrows or waving with, with hands. That's my ticks in this case. So the triggers usually are like with most people. It's stress, anxiety, and my stammering goes up or down depending on the day I'm doing things. So I can, so I can stammer but nothing or terribly much, depending on how good slash bad my day is. And those things might be triggered from whatever. I haven't really found a correlation between that yet, but hopefully one day I will. So a lot of the common misconceptions that I've heard over my years, and I understand very few of them, that, stam that you stammer because you were scared as a child. I, I don't know how that works, but that's a misconception. Uh, that I have brain malfunction. I probably don't because it works just fine. Uh, my nerves are damaged. That actually might be true because since no one really knows why stammering occurs. We, we, we just know that it's there. And we know that it's, it covers a lot of our world, world, world's population. I've also heard, heard that stammers are stupider or have a lower IQ generally, which actually is the opposite. Uh, statistically, stammers have over average IQ. I don't know how, but that is. And stammers are also perceived as shy. That, I think, is also sort of a... What do you say? It's a correlation between you're not sort of... You're, you're, afraid of speaking up and that makes you perceive as shy and I'm a very un unshy person so I'm not sure how that fits in but hey each to one's own so a few of the facts uh, that are that um, there's one percent of the world's population stammer and in Sweden it's five percent of Sweden's population and it's more common in men up to four times since how the chromosomes work since men have an X and Y cr chromosome if your father stammers, it's a very high chance that you will as well because you can't sync up things from your X chromosome to your Y chromosome. But females are lower because they can sync up the data from one um, mutated chromosome from the, health, from the healthy one. So um, according to this, since thought about it, there's 100 people and I am the 1%, so we can't, so we can't hire any more stammers for, this, for, <laughs> for these stats to match up. So the causes that we have that um, are what, what scientists think about stammering is that they are due to environmental f factors. So um, that might be because, in my case, that would be because my father stammers. I've heard someone stammers that's a male. That means that I also stammer because that's how I perceive males to talk. I don't buy into that. That just seems wrong, but hey. The other is that it's a, that we know is that it's a genetical thing. So if I have a child and my wife or, who, or whomever has a gene from their parents that carries the sort of stammering mutation, that means that my boy or girl will have 100% chance of stammering. But if I get a child with someone that doesn't have that, the mutation gene, there's a 50% chance since um, I stammer, my father stammer, my father's mom stammers, and it goes up. So uh, my child have a very high risk of stammering, but I don't see that. That's a problem. My life turned out perfect. 
<laughs> so my experiences that I have had so far over the years, since I've given a talk about stammering a lot of times at school or um, university, at conferences. So I was asked when I was in high school to give a talk to the inner city high school Swedish teacher about stammering. So we'll see, so this is what it is, this is how I feel, and this is the things that you might know if you ever get a child in your class that stammers. So I, for me, it usually goes into, when I talk in front of people, I try to take on a role where I'm teaching someone about a certain subject, and that gives me a certain authority in quotes which makes me feel more confident and stammers less due to that. But most of the time it's just a matter of, okay, let's calm down, let's breathe, and let's just talk this through and everything's gonna be fine. So a few sort of end rolling tips that I could give. Um, I think most of these are um, well known and things that normal people don't do, but it happens. I've had a lot of weird things happen to me due to I stammer. And most, uh, I think it's mostly the people want to sort of help once you get you on your way. Because once you sort of, um, I should say, when I'm interrupted while talking, I should say, please don't, because I have a hard time getting started. And when I'm just um, up full steam, don't stop me, because it takes a while for me to start again, which is fun. So the tips I can say is that let the stammer finish speaking. Even though you have your best in intentions in mind, sort of, oh, you, you want to help him fill in that word or get that, that phrase, he knows that because he knows them or he or her knows that when they're thinking, but when you try to speak, it just stops. And it's annoying for us, and it's even more annoying if someone tries to help you. And also, as I mentioned, don't interrupt. That's, it's, 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 hard enough getting started, and it's harder to get up and running again if someone interrupts you every time with helping, trying to fill in. And this happens a lot, I don't know why, but people start rolling their eyes when someone stammers, which I feel is highly disrespectful, but people sort of, oh boy, here he goes again. And that just pisses me off entirely. So this is just a super quick, run through what stammering is, how I feel about it, and I'm super open about it, so if anyone wants to know more, or sort of wants to pick my brain about something, please do, and even you viewers can also e email me doing the same. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> Any questions? I have a question about these statistics. You say it's 1% of the world and 5% of Sweden. Do you like, is the case that many Western countries have a higher percentage than the average, or is it Sweden specifically? So it's more common in the Nordic countries. They haven't figured out that out yet. And I took the statistics from an old talk that I gave, so I'm not sure where I got them from entirely. But it's more common in the Western countries than the Eastern ones to stammer. I also think uh, the statistic of 1% is not accurate, because in a lot of uh, Developing countries, they don't really have these statistics that are accurate. Yeah. Like a lot of people are not uh, being counted. So I think I think it would be more in the two or three percent range, if not five percent across the, the globe. Just like some countries don't bother giving accurate statistics, especially ones with large populations. Yeah. So I don't think that's that much different. It could be a little bit higher here, but uh, does language like affect? Uh, in any way, like speaking English or Swedish, are they different or not really? Um, for me, it isn't. Speaking new languages are more terrifying. But since I've spoken English for so long, almost as long as I have spoken, but, but, but Swedish, it feels about the same. But, it very, but it's very common to sort of add on to sort of add on dialects, because that sort of takes you on a mask and you you turn into someone else. So speaking dialects usually is one of the ticks. Uh, so if you speak English and you switch over to, I don't know, Scottish English, that helps you stammer less, usually. Really? But after a while, you have this sort of bag of tricks that you do. So you speak Scottish English, you raise your eyebrows, you talk with your hands a lot, you do X, Y, Z. Yeah. And after a while, it just seems weird when people look at you. <laughs> so, I trust, so I try to minimize all of that. 
Do you prefer that it be acknowledged or that people pretend like it's not happening at all? Um, either way. So if so, um, I don't see storming as a sort of um, it's not a capacity stopper for me since I'm so used to it. But I usually like when people say, "Okay, so you the best timer, that's fine. We'll just treat you the same way because that's as it should be." I think. I've heard. I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard some people say that they sing or something like that. They that they don't stammer. I mean, they, it's probably different to different people, yeah. but it it sounds like it's parallel to the idea of going into a role, but like almost like reading a script. Or yeah. So you stammer less when you sing. So there are a lot of famous singers, at least in Sweden that I know of, that stammers a lot. They can barely take a conversation forward, but they sing and they don't stammer at all. So the funny thing is that um, the, if you speak sort of the Finnish dialect of Swedish, which is very soft and doesn't have any consonants, you don't stammer. It's impossible to stammer if you speak that type of Finnish so or Swedish. It, does that have something to do with the, mm -hmm. like, if you try to speak really slowly, do you stammer the same amount, or is it less, or...? You usually stammer less, but it also hap uh, it also depends on which category you stammer in. If you are the one that prolongs words, then it might be, then it might be as hard. But if you're someone that sort of um, stops at consonants, it might be easier. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very in, in, individual. But I stammer, I stammer on consonants, on vocals a lot. So if I talk to someone that has a uh, mogul in their, uh, as the first letter of the word, it makes it really hard for me to say. Like one of my best friends is called Oscar. I have, and I have a really hard time saying his name a lot of times. So I usually call him by his surname, which starts with a consonant, because that's easier for me. What's the word for, for it in Swedish? For Stamini. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that it happens more or less if you... Um, I find I have two ways of speaking. One is which I think about what I'm going to say, and then I say it. Uh, which happens rarely, and the other is I just say things, which happens most of the time. Um, uh, is one of them better than the other? Uh, I don't know, because I, I also speak a lot you know, without thinking about it, mm. and then I don't stammer. So I can have a sort of quick conversation with someone, and I'll stammer, and then just the switch on to stammer. I can't control it. It just happens. Mm. But what's ha what helps me a lot, especially when I'm giving presentations or talking to someone, is that if I speak very slowly and sort of think and articulate more thoroughly than I would have, that helps a lot. So like concentrating on the act of saying it. Yeah. Okay. Might that be the same thing as singing? Because when you sing, you concentrate a lot on like making the words come out right and like the, the tones and all that. Maybe yeah. That's a... I think that's a... It, that's, that's definitely a clear correlation between those two. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks.